Good timing. <laughs> Hello, I'm Pam Hoffman, Everyday Spacer. I'm Jeff Miller, 2049 Outfitters. At Everyday Spacer, we show regular folks how to personally and directly participate in space exploration, science, and astronomy. We're here on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, 12 midnight Eastern Time, and 12 noon on Saturday in Hong Kong. We're broadcasting live from Thousand Oaks, California. Our time changes, though, locally over the weekend. So we fall back, and it will seem earlier for places in the world that do not change. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you. Tonight, we have a guest. Don Jenkins comes back and brings us Ring of Fire, Astra Reviews Annular Eclipse. We'll be back in 8.3 seconds. October 14th, Dawn Jenkins and her husband, Al, took a road trip to see the annular eclipse. This episode, Dawn shares her pictures and stories about this experience. Tell us what happened, Dawn, after we, we heard from Scott. Hey, Scott. Hey, Scott. Thanks for joining Hi, us. Scott. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> All right. Are we sharing yet, Dawn? You want to talk first? Um, I will just turn on the slide. I, I made a PowerPoint presentation. It was easier. I'm going to share my screen. Oh, already done. Yeah. Yep, I shared it. You're good. Oh, oh, good. Great. Yep, um, I can run the studio for you. Oh, hey, the, Jane. Uh, yes, we had a great time for the annual solar eclipse. Ring of Fire in Texas. Hi. Hi, Janie. And cool. the, the annular eclipse worked out very well for us. Our road trip, as you can see, took us 14 days, which is a mere 3,748 miles of a driving. Um, <laughs> I have prepared this. I have prepared this for uh, kind of like a little, uh, you know, my vacation for people who I know not everybody is familiar. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. I know, not everyone's, sorry. I know not everyone's familiar with the U.S. who watches the show as much as we are that live in the States. So I prepared this. Um, oh, well, I should say, because my first slide is going to show you where we went. Very okay. Cool. Did it turn? It didn't. Uh, we it still see the, the title. Yeah, I, I had to change. There it is. Okay. There's the map. So there it is. That's where we went, that big, great spot there. Um, that was the, the path of the eclipse that went through the U.S. And later we'll look at the whole entire path. But uh, I just wanted to mention that we started out in Ohio, around here. And I'd just like to mention, because I, I noticed that a lot of people don't know about this, but this... This blue area here, these these are the Great Lakes. These are like the, uh, the f five of the largest lakes in the world. Yep. And this one is- For Freshwater, like, Freshwater they're, Lakes. They're freshwater. This is Lake, lake right. Superior. And if you ever look up at stats, it is the most massive freshwater uh, lake. It just blows everyone out of the water. So yep. I live right on, right near the lake of the shore of Lake Erie here, and I'm about a mile from that. I'm about a mile from the shore of Lake Erie. Yep. So that's where we went from. Here, this is the stops that we're going to take a look at that we did on the trip. Here at A, uh, Indiana, we went to St. Louis. This is us coming into Dallas. We're going to talk about Antonio, San Antonio, Corpus Christi, and our trip to Boca Chica, which I'm going to just mention briefly at the end. Yes, I was close to the the star base, and I had to go down there. So ah. that was the that was the um, so the first stop, uh, Indiana Welcome Center. I had to nice. show this slide. I had to take this picture, have this picture made, and take this slide because when we came to Indiana, they were advertising the April 8th, 2024. Oh, cool. Eclipse. Total eclipse. And we walked in there and it was like, oh my goodness. So that's why I've showed it to you. 
That's what we're looking forward to next year. So our first stop was in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, where there was a giant arch and I had never been, I'd never been to actually in the city, I've gone by it. It's right on the Mississippi River, this arch. Mm -hmm. And um, it's right in the middle of the city. It's crazy. And here's a picture of the entire, the entire thing. This is the, this, it's a, oh, why did it disappear? Thank you very much. There Sometimes is. these uh, technology. Um, yeah. This is the, Welcome. This is the visitor center. It yeah. is the Gateway Arch National Park. So that's where you go in. You can actually go up to the top of the arch nice. and look down there. Now we didn't do that because we only had like um, a few hours to visit, mm -hmm. but that's what we did there. And um, this is a picture of me on the side of the arch, and that oh, wow. piece of the arch. That's <laughs> how big it is. Now, I love this picture. I, I know I sent this to Nancy and, and our friends there. Uh, this guy over here is he's, he's taking a picture of this kid, but he looks like he's getting his exercise in there. <laughs> so and this is this is the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial Park. I had no idea that this giant park dedicated to Jefferson oh. was also at the arch. I thought that yeah. was fantastic. I just yeah. Right. Hey, I so, got a question about your last slide. Are you planning to go to back to Indiana for the April eclipse? Or are you going to stick around Ohio or go back um, to Texas? What are you thinking? Uh, and quoting my husband from this afternoon, after you do this presentation, we're going to talk about what we're going to do for the next eclipse. <laughs> so I don't know if he's going to take his chance on that, you know, uh, what is it, 30% chance or something that we'll see it here. Right. I'm loving it. Anyway, we're going to move on to Texas, Welcome Center of Texas. And there, there's our, there's, Al. there's Al, and there's yeah. our, equipment. they had a board. And we talked to the fellow who put this together. And um, he actually gave it. me a, he actually gave me a copy of that little, oh, neat. that little paper there, the eight by 10. He actually ran one off for me, but oh, I, cool. I was so, I was so impressed. And very impressed the whole entire time we were in Texas. The people there were extremely nice to us, extremely welcoming. They they were they were wonderful. I have to say, I had very good. We had very good, you know, dealings with people the whole time we were there. Cool. So our first stop was San Antonio, Texas. And if you don't know about San Antonio, this is the site of the Alamo. Yep. what they did with the Alamo, which is a free national park, national landmark, it's a historic landmark, they built what they call the river walk. And wow. basically, these underground, these, un, this, they're below the city level. Wow. They, they, they built, they took this river thing and built it into this canal. And they have these little river boat rides. So this is why wow. I put that picture in there. We went on one of these. And uh, if you see, we're in this, this, this isn't us, the, the boat ahead of us, they are in the tunnel. Yeah. And if you look in the background here, these, these umbrellas is where people are sitting there. The whole entire area, the river walk area is just loaded with tons of uh, eating places with different mm. themes. You can get, you know, just name a cuisine. I'm sure they have it in there. So when we were in the, when we were on that trip, I, I noticed the British pub and I had to stop. So we stopped at the Mad Dog British Pub, Mad Dog British Pub. Uh -huh. And this place was just totally and completely stuffed with with British British paraphernalia. Al looked around and he said, they must have thousands and thousands of dollars in here. He says, this oh. must be a really lucrative business. Oh, yeah. So... There we go. And then uh, the There's next the day Alamo. we went to the Alamo. And um, I'm not going to really say a whole whole lot about it, but uh, it is a national, national, like I said, historic landmark and commemorating uh, a battle between, actually, it was between America and Mexico, and we didn't win. Anyway. Well, yeah. We got a comment we, from Cliff. You want to? Okay, wanna... yeah. 
I, have I guess go. he has I have he has that wait. behind you too. <laughs> it's behind you too. <laughs> that is oh the 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 blue one the the other thing behind is behind you a, yeah behind you the in your one office behind me is a shower curtain. That's my oh, shower curtain. Shower okay. curtain. It didn't make it to my bathroom yet. <laughs> It'll be there someday. <laughs> Hi, Cliff. I got to get back to my presentation to, to show. Yeah, it you got to add it back in. It looks like. Yeah, I got to just go ahead. back to the screen. Yeah. Well, oh, look at that. What did they do? Turn me off? Yeah. Okay. You got to add it back. That's all. Let's go. Let's go. You got to present. Yeah, Inside. present. There we go. Oh. Going back to Texas, El yep. San Antonio. Remember the Alamo. Yep. Okay. The next uh, question. So we don't see it yet, Don. Go ahead and, and you don't see it. Oh no, not yet. Present. Add screen. Let me see. Yeah, I yeah. need to share a screen button. Yep. yep. <laughs> share a screen, share the window. Sorry. I didn't know that was gonna bump me out. Sorry, folks. Didn't mean to hold up the show. Here you so, are. There's Corpus Christi, Corpus Christi over here. Uh, it's it's pretty much the last place in the in the continental U.S. that gets to see this eclipse. Ah, um, okay. This is the picture of the port. I just love this picture of um, this. These two pictures are from the uh, um, Chamber of Commerce, mm. so I figure they wouldn't mind if if we put them in there, but. Uh, our plan was to go down here to this Mustang a Island State Park. We, we actually bought tickets to go into the park, uh -huh. um, you know, before we left. It, it was like five dollars. This thing, I turned my mouse and it it moves, uh, it goes back. Well, um, Janie, Janie says she's got that pattern too. <laughs> what said this? Yeah, I have that celestial sheet on my massage table, popular from the '90s. Oh, oh, I love that. I, I don't know. I, I, it might not come off of that bookcase. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I haven't decided yet. It's been there since I came on in January. Yeah. Yeah, that shows you how fast I move. So the first thing Al said when I was talking about the Mustang Island, he said, "What's that yellow thing there? That is the scenic drive." which we did not take. Our That's hotel good, was off over here. So we had to come down here. This was the plan. It's like a 25 minute drive to get to Mustang Island State Park. So when we went to Cor the, the, we went to Corpus Christi, we left ourselves a day to explore around to see what we were going to do. Nice. And one of the things, yeah, I found out that um, Port Aransas, they have this, um, let me just hit the button here. The Patton Marine Institute, the University of Texas, it's a outreach center and they have in there uh, the different aquatic uh, environments. Mm. Uh, and there's seven different Texas aquatic environments and they have a tank for each one. Wow. But uh, when we were in Port Aransas and we were talking to the uh, employee there, Mm -hmm. They were having an eclipse event, and she said, well, there's going to be 27 mile an hour winds. Oh, dear. And it was like, oh, okay, well, uh, winds like that, our instruments, we had a three-inch telescope yeah. that I had brought, um, my brother lent me, um, it was, it's on a small telescope on an equatorial mount. It would never withstand that. Um, yeah. So we decided we would only be able to use our binoculars. And we also decided instead of going to Mustang State Park, we could actually observe from our hotel. And we did get to see it. Here's a, just a little tantalizing hint. Um, if, if anyone's looked at the website, those are on the website. Those are... Um, probably our closest to annularity pictures. So we did yeah, that. I just, added the, I just added the link to that page. Uh, it should be a live clickable link in the chat for people on Facebook and yeah. YouTube channel. So you can look at that. Yeah, we're going to be looking at that if you guys want to check it out. Yeah. 
And so the day of the eclipse, after the eclipse, which ended for us around 1.30 in the afternoon, mm -hmm. we decided that we would go to Mustang Park. And this is me waving from the beach on the day of the eclipse. <laughs> and you see that smile on my face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've seen it all. A bad day so, at the beach is better than a good day anywhere else, pretty much. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a good day after what I saw that morning. Yeah, I was ready for anything. Then no, we we did go back down there. We had the we had the we paid our ten dollars to enter, and we went down there. Um, we had a lot of clouds during our eclipse. Oh. We we there were times we thought we were going to be clouded out, and when we right. went to Mustang Park, I talked to the lady there. They also had they did have a presentation there, and they did get to see. So we would have seen it if we were on Mustang Island anyway. So before I go back into the detail, detail of the, um, the eclipse, I've got one more slide from our trip down to Boca Chica. All right. I'm not going to go into it a whole lot. We went to Starbase, Boca nice. Chica. You can, you can see it was a short trip. It took us six hours the next day to come, uh -oh. go there and come back. It took us all wow. day. Yeah. And we were rewarded with, with the sights. Um, we're standing in front of this is this is booster nine and this is starship 24. Nice. These will probably be the next ships that are going up from SpaceX. Okay. Uh, when you first you first hit the the build site here and this is the rocket garden. These guys are in their rocket garden. Mm. There's some starships that are uh you know they're they're idle right now. I think this is booster eleven, which is going to be next mm -hmm. um, after booster nine. I forget what happened to ten. So these are this is the mega bay here, and this one is going to be taller than the mega bay. Wow! But this is where they build these things, and these are absolutely huge buildings. Oh, that must be and fun then, to go there. I, I took this picture. This would be the next picture. I had to take that. And then we made it to the launch site. And uh, here you can see, here you can see the close up. This is uh, Starship 26. Uh -huh. He's been returned to the rocket garden. He's no longer uh -huh. there. And um, it's, they're saying that I, I, it might, it is possible for us to see a, a launch before the end of the year. I don't know if we will yeah. or not, but that concludes the, let me get out of here. That concludes the PowerPoint thing. Yeah. Unless right. anybody wants to look at anything else. Um, I'm going to go into the website now and share that. Let's see, present. And uh, I'll go ahead and add the link here too if uh, you're just watching it and you don't have the chat available to you astras-stargate.com slash eclipse dash where are you where are you dash OCT <laughs> HTML. okay we're gonna find out what happened to my oh i know what happened to it what's uh it can't be minimized no, I I have to run another Chrome window. I'm sorry. I Take should have time. had this ready. I used the I used the only one. Where was it? Where is it? It's not coming up. Yeah, you want me to share? I've got this one available, and I can just pop to the top of it. You wanna? You want me to go for the? No, no, don't do that. Because okay. I'll okay. lose. Uh, then I'll have to uh, count on you to. <laughs> Scroll. I didn't share yeah, my yeah. screen. You guys didn't see eight copies of <laughs> eight copies of. Um, I'm here to help if you need it. That's all. No, it's okay. Uh, just, okay. Just give me a minute to get back to the back to the eclipse page here. And I always have to scroll around if you're not ready. Okay, let me. I'm yeah. going to try maximizing it. You can tell me if you do or don't like the. Um, yeah, you want to share again. So the share present. The screen. Yeah. There share the screen. Yep, that's the one. Yep, okay. Basically. This is the newly 
newly completed Astra's Eclipse Guide for the Solar Eclipse of October 14th, 2023. And uh, we're not going to we're not going to do any reading from here. I'm just going to show you uh, um, this picture here. I, I just love this picture here. I found this lady, uh, Carol Dickey, had put this picture up on Flick, Flickr and um, I really liked it. So I wrote to her and asked her if I could put it on the on the website and she was she was happy to to let me do that. Um, cool. Uh, I have some credits to her here. You know, you guys can read that later. There's me observing from Corpus Christi. There's the resources. And then this one will take you to where Pam's going to talk about her uh, eclipse outreach. So I want to show this first here. The um, this is the whole track of the eclipse. And um, it's very wide in this for this one, isn't it? Well, it you get varying. So you were around in here. You get varying. You got 70 percent. So this is yeah. you don't see anything outside of this area. Right. This, this is That's I call this the great, the great awesome. America annular eclipse because it hits all of the Americas, yeah. goes through Mexico at the Yucatan Peninsula, goes in and out of Central America. You know, Central America, they have different little slivers of land and stuff in there. Uh, the the maximum eclipse is here and it's in the Atlantic Ocean. So it's not um, just not on land. But then after that, it goes into here. So that's the whole eclipse. So you're not just, you know, know that it's not just, wasn't just the United States. And we have looked at this before um, um, earlier this year. So you guys are all experts on this, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're experts. Uh, so the ring of fire, this is where we set up in, on our, in our hotel. I love that. Yeah. And, and the just, people came and looked too, didn't they? Oh yeah. I, I asked permission uh, to use the, the, use the hotel. And, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, truthfully, th there's all these places we could have gone around there, just a tremendous mm -hmm. amount. But I like this for the, the, um, the little uh, peninsula of grass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, much better to put that, that binocular stand on there. Mm. Um, Were you somewhat chiller from the wind too with the buildings? Or? No, no. It, oh, okay. we, I mean, there, there was like the wind was just, the wind was, it was bad. Um, uh, uh, really probably the, the decision, the decision to stay here, actually we had a, you know, milliseconds or more longer annularity. Oh. Uh, and it was kind of driven by convenience kind of driven by, you know, are we going to see anything and also driven by, oh, we can only set up the binoculars. Yeah. And why don't we just stay here? We don't have to drive 25 minutes and set up. Right. And I like, so, I like and the, the, the cloud things. cover it's right there. Like the, end oh, of, the rest the of Texas was cover, beautiful. <laughs> the cloud cover was incredible because we woke up in the morning and the sky was totally overcast. Mm. And we ate at the hotel. They had a breakfast and we're sitting there eating breakfast. And all of a sudden the sun came in the window and blasted us while we were eating our breakfast. So, That's you know, right. I mean, we were going to go out there anyway. Oh, I started to say we, we did ask permission from the hotel and the, the, the lady who was on the desk, the front desk, Ashley, mm -hmm. she was all got all excited. She said she oh. wanted to see it when I was asking her. Now, Ashley brought another lady, Teju, and they're both of them were from India, and they were not allowed to go outside during an eclipse because it was bad luck. Yeah. When they were I, in India. Well, I told them that, you know, their parents, you know, you don't have any protection from the sun when you're looking at the eclipse. You don't have proper, you know, you can lose your yeah. eyesight. And so it could be bad luck. Yeah. Um. So... Um, let's see, I want to give you the times, uh, I think it was about, it was supposed to start around 10, 15 mm -hmm. and we were clouded until about 10 30. We started to get, we started to get clear. So this is from our, I wonder if I can, I can't blow that up. Can I, this is from uh, our pinhole yeah, camera. Control, control plus. Control plus. 
That, yeah, that might help. Uh, yeah, but oh, that's a little bit better. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Let me yeah, let me try great. one more. Okay, yeah, that's great. So the pinhole camera, we had a very primitive pinhole camera that mm -hmm. wasn't really, you know, it wasn't. A, it was just something. It was makeshift. I'll I'll put it together in an afternoon, you know, yeah. out of a cardboard box. But we got these images. No from it. This was this was our early image, mm -hmm. which is kind of similar to what I could see. I have some welder glasses, mm -hmm. and I could put them up, and I could see this little bite. It's certainly not first bite. And then this is these are the horns of the sun through the pinhole camera. Right. So eleven. Uh, oh yeah. So then we were observing, and then all all of a sudden, yeah, we weren't observing anymore. It uh -oh. it up. I had gone and asked the ladies from the told the ladies from the hotel, and like, you better come out and look because I don't know if you're going to get to see the annularity. If you want to see something, yeah. come now. So they came out and they saw the. You'll see it in the pictures, the earlier views. Um. Uh, very, uh, it was very, I mean, we were, we were out there and we're looking at the eclipse and we're taking pictures and we're all excited. And then boy, those clouds came in mm. and um, they, here's the first sentence, 1146, they cleared. It was 12 minutes before the ring of fire was to begin. So oh. I had told them to come back at noon and they did. They came back then. So these are our favorite oh. images. They're nice. taken on our one plus cell phones. Yeah, um, yeah you'll, you'll see our cameras set up in, in, when I show the pictures. Yeah, that's um, great. Every time I've tried to do that, it it's terrible. <laughs> well, I, the, the solar binoculars that we had and, you uh -huh. know, um, my brother and Nancy, uh, they both have the solar binoculars. And I got the, um, the, the um, 10 by... 10 by 42. I got the larger one and uh, we paid about 70 bucks for them. I wanted to look at the solar max and those things paid for themselves. Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, yeah, 70 bucks. We, we wouldn't have thing. We wouldn't have. Um, so, yeah, when annularity started, I was I was looking through the binoculars mm -hmm. and when it ended, I was looking through the I was looking through the welder's glass. Mm, watching this okay. move yeah so here's our group i didn't give i didn't want to give a real clear picture of anybody they yeah. were you know these people back here were there was four of them they were back there observing and we right. were observing and those you, are you must have seen sunspots there too right we saw several sunspots before oh yeah oh so, yeah let me scroll you back up don't look <laughs> scroll you back up here uh, I meant to mention, she's got a sunspot in her picture. Oh, she does. Oh, I'll yeah, have to go she look. Does. Now, when you look at this, this is not the sequence of events. It's a montage that's been manipulated. Right. So this is after. This is what this is before, and this is after. So right. Like, it's very nice. Yeah. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna hit that thing to get us back down here. So and here's here's that link again, folks. Yep. You can go and look for yourself. Uh, you won't let me, uh, right. you won't let me go yeah. down there. Okay. I'll just scroll down. You'll get there. Um, oh. Yeah, I've added more, more. What are those pictures? Oh. Was that the camera? You took pictures with the camera? The, of the... Um, below, the, just below there. The two shots of the... I, I, I uh, corrected them. I manipulated oh, okay. these guys. Got it. Okay. And those are manipulated. Those were the ones that were on that slide that we looked at. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, here is the day of, this was posted on GOES. It was posted on um, spaceweather.com. Uh -huh. And that darkness there is the shadow of the moon. And watch as it comes over. Look at those clouds over where we are. Yep. Check it out. That's what it was like. And here is, here, here we are here. And we are, this is the dark picture. I, I stole the dark frame yeah, yeah. when we, when it was over us. And that, that is what we look through to see the eclipse, those clouds. Yeah, I'm glad you got just, uh, Yeah. 
<laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to minimize this guy and I'm going to go into the pictures because I've said all I really intended to say there. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think I have to do what I want to do and then go. Yeah. You may have to swim um, again. Yeah. I need to go. Let me get this set up. Okay, I'm in the right place. Now I can go back and share the new one. I have to stop and start the screen again, right? Yeah. Okay, these are the camera pictures. Hang on, we're not, we don't see that yet. Yeah, I'm just jacking before it comes up. These, okay. are, the camera. Okay, these are from the camera. Okay, good. She's stretching. <laughs> yeah, I'm stretching it. Uh, window, dude. Share. Oh, we got a comment too. Let's see what uh oh Cliff. What Cliff has to say. Yes, there was a sunspot on the sun on the day in that spot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there were oh, actually oh, three oh, groups oh. that I could see through the solar mm -hmm. binoculars. Yeah, I saw like two, but some of the kids saw three because they're you know young eyes. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> one of the Generally things like that that particular sunspot. Uh, I did not see that sunspot until the moon was leaving because mm. by the time we could observe it, the sun was already yeah. over. Right. You know, so you had clouds, over. then so you had I the didn't moon. see it. But then, then I was like, oh, there's a sunspot there. Yes. But there were three groups there. And yeah. uh, cool. there's some more pictures in here. So this is me taking a picture. Uh, that's what it was like. I think... Uh. Beautiful. I think that might be the sun. Uh-huh. That was the morning of all those clouds. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. I got to go. Oh, no. Don't do that. What are you doing? <laughs> Put a screen in front of me. My thing's in front oh, of me. Oh, we can still okay. see the picture. Yep. You still see the, 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 the sun? Yeah, we see your picture still. So yeah, okay. try hitting the next. There you go. Now it's Al oh, okay. with Equinox. So he is he is this is the early times and he is actually mm. demonstrating to you our camera setup. Mm. <laughs> this is our camera setup. This is how okay. we do it. Okay. <laughs> you stick I, your I, camera up on the end of the binoculars and you take your picture. Oh yeah. I, I've seen I, it a lot. <laughs> yeah, you've been I, there. I, I yeah. Love your, yeah, I love your digital um camera holder, camera mount. <laughs> It says digital. digital camera. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, he was looking at a telescope today that a small telescope that had a cell phone holder. So you could actually, you know, yeah. attach yeah. Your, your cell phone to it. I would mention this this tripod is a very yeah. sturdy tripod. Nice. This is a very good tripod. I use this. I bought it to hold uh 11 by 80 binoculars. Oh so imagine two two pieces of you know three inch glasses mm -hmm. so this thing will stand up to that wind yep. yeah, yeah it it would it was very secure very nice very good. there we cool. go there's me yep. and uh i'm i'm just kind of i i use this to kind of demonstrate the the controls you had mm -hmm. uh yeah mostly when you had the sun in there you didn't have to move it very much because yeah you know, and uh, oops. Well, the, I was just going to mention on this one is a lot darker because the clouds came in. Ah, okay. Anyway, here we go. This is the early shot. Mm -hmm. And um, all these rings and everything you see here, all these aberrations are caused by the optical system, the mm -hmm. prisms and the lenses. Mm -hmm. And this is okay. taken, I, I think this is, this must be that early one he was taking with the camera. Yeah. So that's what you're going to see. You're going to see those rings. And did you uh, actually put a filter? Did What's you actually that? put a filter in front of the camera lens? I no, guess. No, no. This is through the solar oh. binoculars. Okay. All right. The solar binoculars. I, I mean, seriously, you get this pair of binoculars. Yeah. The only thing you can see is the sun. The sun. Yeah. That's the only thing you can see. But when there's when there's sunspots on there, yep. you see them. Yeah. So. It's got I look at the end. going on. It's a little experimenting. I like this picture a lot. Yeah. Uh, you notice that you see this is chromatic aberration. Yep. That's from the that is from the the objective lenses. 
Right. That's where you're getting that from. Yeah, the colors. So now oh, we have a picture. This picture is when the clouds started coming in. Okay. And um, it is, this is, this is a cloud filter picture. Now, I do not recommend that, that you look at the sun through clouds, but I've seen people where people posted pictures and, you know, if you're stuck in your eclipse and you, you're you under it and you can see it through the clouds, then you're going to look. And it's okay to look when the clouds are a certain thickness, but you have to be very, very careful. I would very caution you, very, you know, if you're ever going to do this, Yep. People might do this. You might do that at sunset. And if the clouds put a break in there, you could injure your eye. But yeah, um, always err on the side of protecting yourself. Yeah, always, always. Yeah. But we took a few of these. And this okay. one, okay, this is through the, the camera. Uh -huh. My camera and it's just a little point and shoot Canon, but it has an 18 power yeah. zoom. So there you see. This Jamie's is got a, a comment too. The two. These Jane's got a two. comment. Thank you, Dawn and Al, for sharing your wonderful trip experience. Amazing. Love your shirt, too. Oh, thank you. I like my shirt, my clip, clip shirt. Yeah, yep. that's what we were wearing that day. But I really, this is my favorite through the clouds picture. Yeah, it's neat. Mm -hmm. I love it. And that's with the cell phone. Cell phone. Now, this is when we came back and the eclipse the annularity was about to begin this is i know it's kind of funny but it was taken through the camera mm. um through the camera through the binoculars mm -hmm. the next one much better oh neat this one makes you happier but you see the binoculars can see through cloud clouds too oh cool um not very well if you're taking those pictures but this isn't that much cloud cover you yeah, know, it's not totally socked in, but that's where we picked up observing again, right there at that yeah. at that point. Uh huh. And here we go. These are the I picked a few of the good ones from um, um, the Ring of Fire. Oh, that's so beautiful. And this one is you can see we're not quite on center line, but we were darn close. Yeah, that's that's I can't tell you're not on center line. Well, you got more here and you got less there. Yeah, that's, that's pretty darn close, though. The focus, cool. is, the focus is a little off, but, you know, we'll take it. And there's that one. You can see the, the difference. Oh, it's nice. that it's moving, you know. You can see the moving difference. Yes, right, right. Incredible. And this, I think, is the I think is one of the, the clearest. I think this is one of yeah. the clearest where the focus is really what. Oh, I wanted to say, too. I did not take those pictures with my cell phone. The lady, the lady, um, the Indian gal, uh, Teju, she took my cell phone and she was able to see. I don't do this with my cell phone, but I'm going to try to learn how to. She actually took it and did the focusing on the camera where you, you know, you pull up the, the little menu things that you can yeah. pull with. And yeah. that's how she got this nice sharp focus. Mm. The uh, the other ones, the, the they're the ones that Al took that I said the focus wasn't as good. Mm -hmm. I don't. I think he took those, but she took the ones on mine, and she she was adjusting the focus and then yeah. and taking the picture. And I've seen still, people just go up there and snap a picture, and oh my mm -hmm. god, it's amazing. I've never been able to do that. Yeah. Well, there there. If we go back, we'll see the difference. This is where she focused it in the, with the camera. Uh -huh. And then these are the ones where he's not doing that. So yeah. uh, I, I can appreciate myself the difference there. Right, right. You know, it's beautiful. Still. I, I just love it. Do you want me to zoom in on it? See yes, if I please. Zoom in. Let's zoom in. Let's zoom oh, in. Oh, look at yeah, that. Oh. I'm loving it. That's, That's amazing. beautiful. And these colors, those colors are from the um the the objective. This is from light bouncing around in the Right. It's a, it's a some you know that, that's bouncing off somewhere in there. Yeah, because no, just, anytime yeah. you're looking through glass, it's never perfect. They have like several right. that will kind of a, a kind of counter each other, but yeah. it's never getting perfect when you're looking through all that glass. Yeah, I was gonna show a picture where someone tried to take a picture through the um the welder's glass. Yeah. 
And um, I, I really like the welder's glass because you could flip it up and look at the sun and say, okay, this is where it is. And it helps you to guide your telescope where you need to put it. Yeah. But uh, it would have to be absolutely mounted on your camera. And, yeah. and we had it. I mean, we had it. It was all covered with all this, you know, stuff on it. And we couldn't even clean it because I didn't have any cleaners with me. Oh, but uh, you I could did, see I it did see, perfectly, you know, when you were looking through it. I did but, see something on Amazon a couple of days ago. And it was just sort of a card that you might hold against the, the phone. And it had a big circle with a filter in it. And it was like two for... Was it two for ten, something, something like, that. like that? Oh, and I like thought, oh, filter for the cell phone. Yeah, yeah, I thought, oh, that'd be good mm -hmm. to get some of those because you don't, you don't, you want to check them before that, so there's no like pinholes. So if you yeah. hold it up to a regular lamp and you can see through it, then you got a problem. Like, like right, pinholes. and and you make a very very good point there. If ever you're using any kind of protection yeah. from the sun, always yeah. check your filters. Yep. Especially yep, those, can, those little, the little glasses that, you know, I mean, we like the little yeah. glasses, but there could very easily be a defect. Make sure I've got, they feel I've, your eyes. I got some here. The these, these guys, this, this kind yeah. of thing right here. Yeah. I, I always do, I always do a paper check, a blank piece of paper, hold it up behind it. If I see spots of light on the blank uh, piece of paper. Oh, yeah. that is good. And that one of the things good. I know from the last one in 2017, the closer we got to it, the more fake types of things you would find at different uh, plate, you know, vendors and well, online mostly. And I don't know how you test them if to, if they're good, but I know how to test them if they're bad. Right. You just go and you know, just hold them up to your lamp in your mm. in your home, you mm. know. And if you can see light through them in any way, shape, or form, it is not the right thing. They'll even yeah. copy the little um, what is it, uh, CE and ISO, whatever. Oh, yeah. They can fix it. It's just a print that. job. So they can copy right. that, and you think you've got the authentic thing. But if you can see any kind of light through it, it is incorrect. It is not the correct oh, thing. Yeah, I think absolutely. you need a lab to make sure it's right. But you can tell if it's wrong very easily. Very easily. Right, right. Yeah. So we're going to look. Look, I think there's a couple more. Okay. Now we're looking at the horns of the sun, they call oh, it. Oh, neat. Sun. Oh, I love it. We're coming out of the eclipse. Oh, let's see if I have a time in here. Uh, I don't have a time in here. There's another. Nice. Moon's coming out. And then. Oh, these are great. <laughs> there's a picture to show you how much my hair was blowing. Mm -hmm. That's what the wind was like. You look a lot like your mom in that picture, don't you? Oh, well, thank you. I don't mind looking like my mom. You can even oh. see his hair blowing. Yeah, it was it was really windy. So, and so I don't, I didn't get a feeling that the clouds were like moving. I kind of felt like the clouds just uh, evaporated or something. Mm -hmm. for a while. So I got one last photo. Yeah, this is at, uh, this is at 1231. And uh, you can see we're pretty much, um, I don't think this is actually the end of the, what we were able to see, but yeah. uh, we were done. Our eclipse, I think, was supposed to last until um, 1.38 or something like that. Uh -huh. And we were done before that. And we didn't care. By this time, we didn't care. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was the case where I was too, and you probably had a very noticeable uh, dimming and also the the temperature change. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't notice that that much. The, okay. the dimming. I mean, the you know the clouds would come over and it would get darker. Yeah, um, that makes not sense. Not as much. You if you remember that, I'm gonna put this down now so we can. Yeah, I'm gonna because because I am turning this over to Pam and she's going to talk about how she, how she treated a lot of people to some yeah. good solar views. Right. I think I want to say before that though, we were not on the center line here in Southern California and I uh, went and helped them at the Moore Park City Library. And it's just a few miles from my home. And we set up, what I really love is the variety of equipment we had. And Christine, who's one of the librarians there, she put in a request for 
things from well as a, i'll show you the, the information and the thing but she put in a request got all kinds of equipment i mean thousands of dollars worth of equipment because of the library and i brought a couple of pieces i only have filters for two things and i had like some glasses type things not the paper not these little paper things but some actual they look like sunglasses but they're just blackout and the only thing you can use them for is the sun so all right let me go ahead and add that in and uh, I will talk to that. So thank you so much, Dawn, for including us in your article. I went and told them at the Moore Park City Library, hey, you have been <laughs> cited in Dawn's, uh, our, Dawn's <laughs> website. As, and, and Dawn's in Ohio, by the way. So yeah, I said, and tell your boss, tell your team, tell anybody you need to. <laughs> so Dawn did this very, very nice write-up for us. Um, and we talked about the more proximity library here. She she requested this from the Solar Eclipse Activities for Libraries, S-E-A-L. So if you have a library near you, you can do the same thing. I would certainly ask now, especially if you're on that, that center line for the next eclipse in April, yeah. ask the library to reach out to the Solar Eclipse Activities for Libraries. There's a link here. We've given you the uh, link to, to Dawn's page. She has linked to SEAL as well as Moore Park City Library and our local club because I brought a piece of equipment here. It's a 10 inch F 4.7 Dobsonian telescope, which I have borrowed from the Ventura County Astronomical Society, VCAS for short. Uh, and they have a whole bunch of equipment to share. If you have an astronomy group near your, sometimes libraries also have, you know, telescopes that you can borrow, which actually now that Christine got all that equipment, she can loan it out through her library too. So there's a lot of benefits to getting this, you know, seal, equipment and they gave it to her it is not something she has to return all right so we, we talk about what kind of things um we took oh we got some we got some comments let's hear i was just clip it got very dim in 2017 and cool yeah i was we surprised sure we had 70 percent, like it says here and i was so surprised at how cool it got and how I wouldn't say dim, but it was the light changed. It was very interesting. Yeah. So I didn't notice any real darkening. Oh, here. over here. Okay, yeah, because yeah, Jeff stayed home and he had the he had the sample glasses and uh, he was looking. So you didn't see it. Okay, interesting. Well, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's I, really fun if you could could get your head together when you're in the middle of the totality to look around the horizon because you will see light you will see places where the sun is shining in the distance oh interesting okay yeah, along the horizon you'll see you'll see light if you have, to have a clear horizon obviously but yeah, yeah yeah we're we're very spoiled we went to the eclipse in 1991 that was seven minutes yeah. like almost none of them are that long so um we i took i only got a couple pictures um but we did have the scope there and you can see i actually made uh, a box to go over the telescope for the filter part. Uh, got that idea from the local, um, the local astronomy. Well, he's he's got uh, cameras and telescopes. All right, so you got some information about the uh, equipment, the groups that are local. Uh, the the folks from the Acorn, which is kind of a local little newspaper, came out and they talked about us too. Uh, there's the NASA at my library link to learn more about that. But uh, Christine got a sun spotter and she got several of these sunoculars, they call them. They're only good, they're binoculars that are only good for uh, looking at the sun. And they sent her this Coronado Hydrogen Alpha Telescope. This thing's fantastic. Again, it only can look at the sun, but there's a little place up in here where you focus the dot from the sun, the light, the dot from the sun. If it's in the middle of that, you look through it and you can see it. It's an amazing piece of equipment. <laughs> good framing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got some comments. Oh, good. Okay. Scott yeah. says, I'm in Acton, California. During the eclipse, I could notice some dimming. You did. All right. Yeah. And Cliff said, hope to be in Frost, Texas in 2024. <laughs> yes. At Tom Pickett's place. Boy, yeah. I might be back in Texas. I don't know. Either that or Durango. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, four plus minutes next year. Oh, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. So if you go to the places where that we have linked up above, you'll see the solar eclipse activities for libraries and the NASA at my library. Those are the logos. So you recognize it when you get there. Uh, oh, yeah. So I included this nice picture of like a 70 percent mm -hmm. um, view. Yeah, I saw that from Xavier's thing. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. He works with Fred Espinac, right? I don't know about that. I think I thought that was the guy his, his right here, his name, right? Yeah, exactly. I thought that was the guy that worked with Fred. He he may have. I just know that. Yeah, it's really neat. He's the one who does the the map, and I think you probably remember. But while we're showing that big eclipse, with the whole eclipse, that was Xavier's map, his interactive Google map, that one we looked at. And boy, looking if you look around and and go into actually his web pages that are connected on there. He has all these different stories from from different eclipses. He is observing, you know, observing reports from all these different eclipses that he's been at. And yeah, and I know Fred has spent years and years plotting out what five hundred years of eclipses. Oh yeah, what a thousand, legacy! Five thousand years of eclipses. Five thousand years. Oh, I thought it was like five hundred. Oh my god. No, oh, no, it's five thousand years, and you and you can go, you can go out and get. So much information from Fred Espinac. Yeah, Fred. He used that's to work why I used his Eclipse Wise picture. Yeah, he used to work at NASA, but he's retired now, right? Yeah. yeah. But he'd be he'd make a great guest. I wonder he'd if we make can get a great him. guest. I wonder if he'd talk to us. That'd be really fun. <laughs> if we get closer to the the April eclipse, you know. <laughs> Anybody have an in with Fred Espinac? <laughs> <laughs> I bet somebody we know does. Yeah, I bet they do. So uh, anything else you want to share with us? Uh, and thank you for, for letting me talk about the local event here. <laughs> oh, no, I think it's great. No, I, you know, I'm, I'm intending to write up my whole story about going to Boca Chica. I, I don't know if we'll do anything on that or not. Maybe they'll launch that thing again. It'll actually do something this time besides blow the place up. <laughs> There's that link again, folks. Definitely check out this page. And Dawn has hundreds of pages on her website about all manner of cool space yeah uh, yeah i got all kinds of spacex pages and yeah. i'm putting out i'm working on the orbit pages that's what i'm working on orbits pages yeah she she does a lot of her own diagrams too and it's, yeah. a, it's an amazing yeah. website you could get lost there for days <laughs> yeah i do it's terrible <laughs> <laughs> i can't find anything either i need a search engine <laughs> yeah oh yeah i i totally get that so uh how about we hear from jeff about some stellar events this week go ahead jeff okay some as you said some stellar events this week november 3rd through um, november 10th oh jenny has some fabulous fun she says yeah. thanks okay. thank you for being here jenny and you're welcome yeah. thanks, jenny. it's a new month so check out skymaps.com oh yeah let me share that give me let me get back over here this is a this is a one sure yeah go ahead this is a wonderful place to go oh yeah free maps huh yes yeah for yeah for free download a list of targets to observe and the night sky chart and more oh and i wanted to since it's the beginning of the month again uh let me talk to you about november from the old farmer's almanac this is the version that i really like and you know don i want to get a copy of the one you get every year this year too oh, i think the observer's handbook. Is is it is yeah. yeah not the observer's handbook <laughs> i use it all the time <laughs> you get the 2024 one yet you know it's time to start looking for it, but half the time, you know, it doesn't come out till late. Oh, and, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So they have a little bit right at the beginning of each month. They call it Skywatch. Jupiter in Aries comes to opposition on the third. That's tonight. Rising at sunset. Opposition. Yay. Yep. <laughs> it's biggest and brightest of the year. The giant world is visible all night. Saturn in Aquarius is also seen the entire night. Any telescope using at least 30x magnet magnification will capture its glorious rings. You can sort of see them in binoculars, true. It just like it looks like it just has ears. You can't see the rings per se. Uh, Uranus in Aries reaches opposition on the 13th 
to the left of Jupiter, which is also in Aries. Binocular owners can easily find Uranus by looking for a green star halfway between Jupiter and the famous Pleiades star cluster. That's actually very handy. Cool. Okay. That's going to be really easy to find this year. That's good. Yeah, I, I find it interesting that Aries is near Jupiter and not Mars. Oh, wow. Well. Uh, you know, um, the, I looked it up in the Observer's Handbook, and Jupiter was at opposition at midnight, right at the same time we started the show. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it's, uh, over now. Now. it's all downhill. <laughs> That's still pretty good. Uh, since no star is green, note that no star is green, identification should be easy of Uranus in this case. Not many meteors are expected when the Leonid meteor the shower peaks at night on the 18th and 19th. Look for the moon to the right of Jupiter on the 24th. Oh, that's later in the month. Okay. We have a couple early in the month, too, meteor showers. But Jeff will tell you more about that. Yeah. Oh, and about green stars, I actually saw something where they showed that physically a star cannot produce green. Yep. Um, just kind of fascinating. You haven't seen Zubinel Ganubi then. <laughs> right, yeah. So, so the only way you could get a green star visible yeah. is if it's moving far, if it's a blue star moving far enough away from you to be red shifted. Oh, okay. Because that, that shift it toward red, which would put it in, in the green, but it, it'd have to be fairly close because anything farther away would be shifted farther into the uh, red. Okay. okay well, but they say no star is green. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead, Jeff. So thank you. November 3rd, um, which is tonight, the next Globe at Night project begins, and it runs from the 3rd through the 12th of 2023. In the Northern Hemisphere, look for Pegasus or Perseus. In the Southern Hemisphere, look for Gress or Pegasus. Um, so you go out, look at the sky, take photos, and report it to the site. Also, Jupiter's in opposition, as we said. Yep. But I'm reading the darn spread. Uh, <laughs> so th this is a great time. You can to adapt. No. Uh, no. Okay. It's more funny if I don't. Okay. This is a great time to photograph Jupiter, but not if you're watching our show. Watch our show instead. <laughs> now you can, in about ten minutes, you can go photograph <laughs> Jupiter. Um, November 4th, Saturn is stationary. We've discussed this before. Yes. Um, November 5th, the Southern Torrids meteor shower peaks. Look after midnight. Look east after midnight. Um, also on the 5th, daylight savings time ends, and we fall back and set our clocks one hour earlier in the morning. That's us here in many of the states of the U.S. Many, yes. Most other places don't bother with that no. nonsense. Um, we shouldn't. Yeah. Oh, they do in Europe. I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, they do. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they do. I did not know that. Yeah. And and yeah. like like the U.S., they keep saying that they're going to change time. <laughs> they're going okay. to they're going to they're stop doing that in sure. Europe too, just like they are here. <laughs> Someday, maybe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And too, yeah, on yeah. The, and on the fifth, last quarter moon. Um, it rises at midnight. It's not big, though it will be in the sky for the rest of the night. So basically, it will be there when you're looking for the meteors. That's with your meteor shower. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, it's a fact. you got to watch for the moon. <laughs> yeah. um, November 6th, moon is at Apogee. November 7th, <laughs> it's election day for many places <laughs> here in the U.S. Um, November 9th, the moon is on the equator. And... The moon and Venus are in conjunction, which probably means that the Venus is near the, the equator, too. <laughs> yes, probably does. <laughs> now, either November 9th or, no, or November 12th through or 11th through 12th, the northern torrid meteor shower peaks after midnight. I guess it depends on which um, source you're using. Uh, yeah, and these are mostly predictions. It's kind of in the same place every year as the the planet moves into the debris field of a comet's tail, like it's just sitting there and we move into it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why midnight too, because we're rotating around into it, that kind of thing. And, and I was going to say, Don, do you know more about that Northern Torrids? 
meteor yeah, shower. Yeah, most, most meteor showers is better to see them at, at midnight, but you know, I've noticed that certain certain ones, you know, the, the earth is actually hitting it, you know, like okay, like the you know, you, you want to see a meteor shower and you find out that it's peaking it you know at midnight over japan right ah or, or if you're in australia it's probably peaking over you know canada or something yeah and you can see you can see other meteors from that particular debris field at other times it's just that's when that's supposedly, true. supposedly the most that you'll see yeah, you're right. you know, I, I remember uh reading once that um even the sporadic meteors that we see at night are not really sporadic. They're actually coming from those showers. Yeah, I guess there's about 500, 100 of which they have verified. But I tend to think about 13 a year are the ones that are good to look for. Okay. I, I don't know. I have to I have to look into it again. But it made a whole chart, and but that was that was a while ago. So yeah. and and it's interesting uh, that sometimes we identify new storms i don't know if it's yeah. happened lately yeah. but you know they they do you know identify new storms right right yeah yeah and um also um good news about the um northern torrids is that the moon will be smaller yes. since it's waning there so right. it'll be more of a sliver then so it won't be yeah. as in the way and it comes it up later too yeah. so yeah um so also um, oh, then um, on November 10th, our Friday night show, tune in for another crunchy topic. We'll tell you more about that shortly. Join us Fridays at 9 p.m. Pacific time on the Everyday Spacer Facebook page and the Everyday Spacer YouTube channel. Uh, so some other events and activities I want to talk to you about. One, and it's the New World Conference. Uh, that's November 17th and 18th. You want to join astronauts, artists, and experts in policy, education, and human health discussions. It has been dubbed the best little space conference on the planet. This will be in Bullock, Texas State Museum, 1800 Congress Avenue, Austin, Texas. And they get the zip code. You probably won't care unless you're mailing something to them. But, yeah, that's uh, that's coming up pretty quick here, folks. Yeah, you know, Austin, Texas, I keep keep hearing it's like it's like growing like mad. And oh, you know, okay. imagine with that star base down there that, uh, yeah, it might be a good place to be for space. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, a lot of Californians are moving there because it's not California and turning it into California. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, they're only allowed to come if they're nice, <laughs> nice people in Texas. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was neat to hear that you found some nice people there. Oh, like yeah, it. they were really nice. Yep. They were nice. Very cool. Yep. Yeah. So if you or someone you know has done something interesting involving space exploration, science, or astronomy, we'd love to share our live. Join us again next Friday, November 10th. We're looking into another crunchy topic. We're calling it, What's the Matter with Antimatter? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Yep, and I think you're taking a point. I want to know. <laughs> it's it's from a number of different things of where um, they thought antimatter had certain properties, mm. and it doesn't. And so, <laughs> that, you know, basically every they, time it happens, yeah. we got a theory, and then it's like, nope, that's not it. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, so we're going to be looking at those plus some other things um, about antimatter. So. Yeah, Jeff's taking point on that. So uh, thanks so much, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Dawn, for being our guest. I yeah. really enjoyed your presentation, and I love hearing about your eclipse event, your your adventure down in Corpus yeah, Christi. That was so cool. I, it was a lot of fun, and and I and I forgot. I just wanted to 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 shout out a little plug for the um, Everyday Spacer live stream. If you guys. You know, hit the like button and subscribe if you're not oh, subscribed. You. That's that's great. Yeah. You can always use that on a YouTube channel. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and Scott says, great show. Thanks for sharing, Dawn. Isn't yeah, that thank, awesome? Thanks, Scott. Yeah, let's do a shout out for everybody. Thanks, uh, of course, Dawn for being here and Janie and Scott and Cliff and... Um, uh, <laughs> well, happy place. I don't know who you are, but thank you. 
Yep. Um, Nancy was here. Nancy was here. Um, we said Janie, right? Yeah. Do we get everybody? I think we got everybody. Janie Scott. Yeah. Nancy. Yep. Cliff. Californication. I just love <laughs> Cliff's nose. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go, Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, folks. Have a great week. And uh yeah, we'll catch up with you yep. next Friday. Yep. Good, Good night. night. Good day. Mm -hmm.